who had a bigger influence on how to take Epstein's game to the next level? Was it Ghislaine because what she learned from her father or was it something that Epstein, like who brought more to the table for the crime that they committed, both of them together? Was it more Epstein's background or was it more Ghislaine's experience? Well, uh, you mean after Robert Maxwell's death? Yes. So I think Ghislaine was looking to continue the same role she was sort of doing for her father, which was being an ambassador for her father, basically, in New York. Right. And the interests that represented him, his handlers, sort of looked to her. And at this time, uh, Jeffrey Epstein is, is the money manager for Leslie Wexner. And Leslie Wexner uh, is affiliated with a group of very powerful um, billionaires who, at the same time that Robert Maxwell made his inroads to New York with Ghislaine sort of as um, uh, the ambassador. Um, oh, sorry, I lost my train. Oh, yeah. Um, they're quoted in, I think, Vanity Fair of having court, uh, those, those billionaires courting Robert Maxwell specifically. So it seems like there was some sort of effort to bring those interests together even before Robert Maxwell died. This name, Les Wexner, if you're not familiar with it, I mean, go ahead and tell. I mean, this is Victoria's Secret. Shy. This is the guy yeah. that basically created the modern day shopping mall, Abercrombie and Fitch, Bed sort Bath of, and Beyond, yeah, yeah. Victoria's Secret. Like, reveal a little bit about this guy. Okay. So, I mean, he he's a retail guy. So, I guess the big brands we're familiar with, yeah, he's the one that backs them. But he, his rise to power is partly linked to. Um, people that cr that built the shopping malls and then yeah. leased space to him. They called him the Merlin of the mall, something of that capacity? Y yeah, I think that's a nickname for, for Wexner, yeah. But okay. uh, people like Edward uh, De Bartolo, I think is how you pronounce it. De Bartolo. De, De, De Bar Bartolo family, Bartolo. they own the 49ers. I mean, this is all coming together. These were, Yeah, uh, yeah. Follow the money, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, and then uh, Alfred Tobman, who was another big shopping, he built a lot of shopping malls. He's one of the guys that really, he's considered a mentor to Wexner, as is Max Fisher. And these are guys, really powerful people from Detroit, specifically involved in real estate shopping mall stuff. Max Fisher also has a background in oil, but also got into um, a lot of, well, he's the guy that made Tobman, I guess, because Tobman built a lot of, I think, the uh, gas station, like convenience stores for the oil company, and then got into retail yeah. uh, commercial centers. The, and the reason I asked uh, about Lex Wexner, Wexner is because I went down the rabbit hole. You've done multiple interviews with Tim Dillon, right? Oh, I love Tim. I know. Yeah. Like uh, he's uh, someone that we're in touch <laughs> with. How do you with, not love the way. guy? <laughs> he'll be, he'll be here pretty soon, but I've watched multiple of your interviews. I'm a fan of Tim Dillon, you know, the, uh, multiple connections there, but you said, quote unquote, Epstein made his money from links to three powerful men. And you said Les Wexner, you said Bill Gates, and then you said Donald Trump. That's this not for me. That's a 2001 article from the Evening Standard, which is a mainstream media publication in the UK, prestigious, right? And it's never been retracted. It's from 2001. But if you believe US mainstream media, Bill Gates and Epstein didn't meet till 2011. And this is 2001. So there's 10 years of... <laughs> there's more than 10 years, I think, with Bill Gates and Epstein, yeah. Gotcha. It's pretty crazy that... There's an article like that out there from 2001, and mainstream media is like 2011. I mean, what did that article say? Uh, well, it's it's what? talking. So that Evening Standard article is talking mainly about Prince Andrew and who are Prince Andrew's new friends. Oh, it's Ghislaine Maxwell because obviously, you know, Robert Maxwell's uh, theft of the pension fund money obviously had huge ramifications in Britain. A lot of people, uh, for understandable reasons, didn't like the Maxwell family after that. So a lot of the gossip columns or newspapers would report a lot on what the Maxwell children were doing. They sort of became infamous celebrity children, you know? And so they follow up on them. And then Prince Andrew, you know, circa 2000 or so, is going on vacation after vacation with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. And so Jeffrey Epstein is sort of introduced in that article and they're trying to explain to their audience in, in Britain in 2001 who Epstein is because people probably haven't heard of him. Yeah, they all know Ghislaine. They all know Prince Andrew, obviously, but they don't know Jeffrey Epstein. So the introduction to Jeffrey Epstein is he's a, they describe him as a property developer. And actually, a lot of early articles on Epstein don't say a billionaire, financial advisor, like a lot of the later ones do. They say property developer. There's a real estate connection there, which is... I sort of explore. And, the, and um, then in that article, what's the Gates Trump connection with all that's this? That's what they said. The line there is that this is where, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's money comes from. These are his clients, his top clients, basically. And so people know that there was a, a longstanding Wexner relationship, a longstanding Trump relationship, but it mentions Bill Gates. And at the time, Bill Gates never challenged that article. You know, it was never retracted. Like I mentioned earlier, the UK has very strong libel laws. If it was untrue, he could sue and it could be retracted today. But it's never been done. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.